like you were here. Lance. Come. Come here. May you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong. And may you stay forever young. In 2013, I meet Clinton Young, who is on death row in Texas. I'm making a documentary on the death penalty and talk to him about his situation. But you've been here for a long time, right? Yeah, I've been here since 2003. I was 19 when I came to death row. I was 18 when I got the case, right? Oh. And you're now? 30. 30. Yeah, I just turned 30 in July. It's kind of a depressing milestone. I would milestone. have said congratulations, but it's yeah, not really... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was kind of a depressing milestone. I mean. Have time. At one point, I didn't think I was gonna make it to 30. Mm -hmm. You know, and now that I made it, it's like well, I've spent all my 20s on death row. So Clinton has been convicted of murder. Being involved in gang culture, he refuses to talk to the police when he's arrested. He's also on parole from juvenile prison, where he had done some time for burglary. For Clinton, it goes without saying that you don't inform on others. But the other young three men arrested with him have no such qualms. They all claim that Clinton is the killer. And then JR comes from around the house and he gets kind of like real close to Doe's car by walking around and then that's when Clint Young shot him. And Clint walks over to the body and pulls up the pillow, put it back over his head. I pulled the trigger again, and he ran around to the front of the car and got back in and told us to get in. After our talk, Clinton asks me in a letter to look at his case with an open mind. He says he is not the killer and claims his co-defendants made plea deals with the DA. When I look at his case, I immediately know something is seriously wrong. There are no fingerprints or DNA or any other evidence that Clinton committed the two murders. Only statements by his fellow suspects, Mark, Darnell, and David, which show substantial discrepancies. They realize all the stuff I have in my favor, and they don't want me to get it before the court because they don't want me to win. See, it's not about justice. It's about upholding the statistic. I'm gonna need your vehicle. Pow, pow. Okay. The past four years, I examined testimonies and gathered with health information such as crucial ballistic research. I also talked to involved parties and witnesses. I hope to get an answer to the question, could it really be that the wrong man is on death row? The guy getting in the vehicle. You still put your money on him, huh? It's still him. It's no excuse, but my defense is I didn't kill nobody. I didn't know nobody was going to die, and nobody was supposed to die. You know, we was going to go buy some blunts, marijuana cigars, you know, and then things took a turn. The guy got shot, and then at that point, I was worried about getting in trouble. David Page shot him outside the car, and then Mark Ray shot him later on. This is what happened. I don't have a fear from the truth. Where is everybody sitting in the car? Doyle's under the wheel, obviously. Doyle's on the wheel. And I was in the middle at the time, in the middle. And Mark was right here, and JR was on the other side, the left side of me, in the back seat. So, so this is the, the, the seats here. 
Darnell sh uh, should have seen what happened, right? So he, he well, must see, have he, seen... He lies about where he was sitting at. Yeah, he I said he was... Uh, in the, the middle. In he the middle. Not, he was not in the middle. He was um, sitting directly behind me. Because right I, I turned like this and talked to him. Mm -hmm. Be for the, because Mark Gray says he was there. He wasn't. Mark Gray Mark was in... I guess because he thinks I did it, so he don't want to be lined up right behind me in case I try no, to No, he said him. he was in the middle so he can right, see right. the gun, I guess, right? I guess that's, that's the only thing I can think of, but he was not sitting in the middle of that car. I know so that for a fact. So what's the car seating? What do you think was the car seating? Oh, I remember the car seating. It was Duel, me, David Page, Mark Ray, and Darnell McCoy. Okay, so no one actually said that that was the car seating. So no, no, but that's what I'm saying. Four versions. Now. I mean, yeah, but I remember it like I can even tell you the song that was playing on the radio at the time it happened was uh, Superman by Three Doors Down. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I remember, I have. I guess I got a better memory than them, right? When you get to the house, does everybody just stay sitting in the car? Yeah, it stayed seated for a while until JR went out there and went around the house. So JR gets out and he, why is he walking around the house? Do you know? He this was supposed to buy, this was a buy, well, we. From this house, from this guy living in this house. So Jr. gets out and walks around the house, right? And so that leaves the, the three of y'all, the Doyle, sitting in the car. What happens then? And then Jr. comes from around the house and he gets kind of like real close to Doe's car by walking around, and then that's when Clint Young shot him. And David Page was standing outside the car, walking up to the car mm -hmm. when he shot him. David Page shot him? Yes, that's what I'm saying. The window was rolled down, and being like that, and when he hit him, your natural reflex is Doyle set back up yeah. and fell forward, and that's when Page shot him in the back of the head. And then I jumped out the car. So what you're saying is that JR is somewhere outside this car over here? Where was JR standing when Clint? He was standing right in front, right in front by the door. He's standing there when Clint any conversation, I mean, you're sitting right, almost right behind them. What, what conversation is going on in the car right before and during the time that, that Clint sh shoots Doyle? What happened? Okay, before he was sitting like, at a, Clint was sitting at a, like at a slant way like this. Mm -hmm. And he had the, the gun up under him like this. And when he was going to, sh when he was going to shoot him, Doyle was paying attention to to uh, JR, and JR reached and opened up the door. As soon as JR reached and opened up the door, Clint went and shot him. Okay, so what, did Clint say anything when he did it? He says, sorry, Doyle, and then just shot him. He said, sorry, Doyle, and then shot him? Okay. And can, can you remember how you felt when the first shots were fired? It was like, I don't know, I mean, I can't really describe it, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, I, I just remember thinking, you know, damn, we're all in some shit now, you know? And I don't know if it's because of coming from TYC and being in such an extremely violent environment that it actually, I mean, in some ways, numbed me to the violence. Mm -hmm. I mean. But it's different when someone right before your eyes gets shot, shot in the head, right? Right, but I, mean, I wasn't looking, so I mean, it was like I heard it. I was looking out the car like this, and I heard the gunshots. JR and Clint picked them up and put them in. First, I didn't snap what had happened. I didn't know what to do with shoot, because keep in mind, I'm sitting right beside Doyle, and this dude's shooting into the car. So I started cussing David Page out, because I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't snap until I looked back down, and then Doyle, and I was like, man, fuck. Likely is it because the two co-defendants who uh, did a lot of less time, they said that Clinton was sitting here, pulled his gun from his waistband and shot him twice in the head. How how likely is that? From no. that, is it possible? Not just pulling and shooting. No. Can you show me how that would? It had to do this number right here. And if you shot from right here, yeah. There's no way. What, where would you hit me if I do this? Probably wouldn't even hit you. Because? It'd probably miss you because you're not aiming. On this distance, you can still distance. miss? Yes. If you just pull out your, and, and do it like this, yeah. you can miss this person. Trying to shoot the head, 
The body you can hit. The head is harder to hit. Mm -hmm. Because it's moving, right? But if, if, if he was, yes, if he got shot in the head twice mm -hmm. and kind of close, the bullet holes were kind of close, there's no way he could have just pulled it out and, and shot like that. Because that's what they said. He pulled it out of his waistband, kept it there, and shot him from that point in, on this side of the head. Was he a, uh, an expert shooter? No, he was 18. No. Okay. There's no way he could have shot like that and hit the person twice in the head. Because you have to be an expert? You'd have to do a lot of training. And at 18 years old, there's no way he could have done it. There's no possible way. Because bullets do not shoot around a corner. Are you saying that Clint Young was the only one that had a gun with him? Had guns with him? Did you know that he had guns with him when he left Dorset? At the time, no. Okay. When, when did you find out that he had guns with him, or that y'all there were guns in the car? When, after he murdered the uh, dog, the Douglas. My favorite picture of him. This is, um, this is probably one, that one, and... How, how old is he here? Uh, Probably first grade. Yeah, first grade. And there's the one in the suit that's my favorite. <laughs> he was like three, this four. This one? Yep. Oh, that's really, that's really That's probably cool. my favorite, favorite. What was he all dressed up for? Just for go get a picture taken. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he still has the same smile. He does have the same smile. How is it for you to visit him? Uh, can't wait to get there and hate to leave. It's real emotional. Again, this every time, you know. <sighs> every day, you know he's living in a, a box. He's my baby. <laughs> would sit in that prison for him to get him to come home. I just remember it being so typical, like the the older brother, little sister. I mean, we, you know, I remember playing together. I remember, um, you know, skating and riding bikes and um, going in the woods and building forts. And um, I also remember, you know, me locking him out of the house and us fighting and playing. Um, Baseball. He was good to me, you know, he helped me with things. Um, we played together. Um, he also, you know, picked at me. Of course, like any brother and sister does, did stuff that would, you know, I don't know, chasing me around the yard with a garden snake. You know, the typical brother, sister, picking on each other things. He was, he was a good brother, or he is a good brother. I drove like almost halfway through the woods and they got him out. JR, who got him out? JR and Clint got him out, put him out, and then they- Did y'all get out of the car? Did you get out of the car at that point? Yeah, all of us got out of the car at that point. And then JR and Clint, and they picked him up and carried him to the side of the little river thingy. And they rolled him on his back, so that way he'll probably either drown, or if he don't die from the bullets, he'll either drown at first. Mm -hmm. And then he asked Mark Ray to shoot him. Mm -hmm. And Mark Ray had the 22. And Mark Ray shot him in the back of the head.
you're going to voluntarily then tell us what happened out here where everybody was and yes, in regards to that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the little road where the body was found. So we just stepped back and Clint walked over to the body and pulled it up the pillow and put it back over his head and pulled the trigger again and he ran around to the front of the car and got back in and told us to get in. And JR got back in the front. How many times did he pull the trigger? He pulled the trigger once again. Okay, so the body, how's the body laying? The body was laying like long ways. Okay, face up, face down, on the side, it was face down. He told us to lay it face down. And when we were driving up, he told me and Manny and them that if we said anything to anybody, that he'd kill us and our families. I mean, I don't know what they talked about in the back of the car or anything like that, or when I was away from them, or I don't know. But um, I wasn't driving around threatening them, because they all had loaded guns, you know what I'm saying? Were any of you armed? Clint was armed. Uh, Mark Ray was armed. And uh, JR. What were they armed with? Two 22s and a 38. Who had what? Do you remember? Uh, Clint had the, a 22. Describe it. It was chrome with a long nose on it. And it was 22 caliber, you're sure of that? Oh, I know it was a 22. Okay. And uh, they had another one, like a revolver. It was a 22 short. Who black. had it? And the 38 who, was... Who had the 22, the short black 22? The short black 22, Mark Ray. And then there was another gun you said, who had it? The 38 was in possession of... of uh, was in possession of me, I had. You had it. What happened? He dropped his mark off first. Where did he drop Mark off at? He dropped Mark off at his house. And he dropped me off right there on the top of the hill. Did they talk about what they were gonna do after they dropped y'all off, where they were going, what their plans were? They talked about he talked about that he wasn't finished yet and he was still had to do, he had what, something else to what do. What did you take that to mean when he said, I wasn't finished, I'm not finished yet? He wasn't finished yet. That he was going to kill somebody else or do something to him. At the time, I'm thinking, I really wasn't thinking a whole bunch. That was a problem, really, actually, right? I mean, I had been up for days. I was high on methamphetamine. I wasn't in the clearest state of mind. At that point, I just wanted to get away from everything, and that's why I left East Texas. That, that's what I don't get, why you don't just get away from these guys, but you stayed with them. Well, the one of, well, I stayed with one. I asked myself why, I mean, the same question, you know, why I didn't have him just turn around or whatever, right? I know that any normal person would have said, hey, I'm gonna call the police, you know? But I didn't have a normal life, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not trying to really blame it on my life so much, but it conditions you to certain things. You know, it's the way you respond to critical situations. I just wanted to go to sleep, Jessica. That's all I wanted to do. And that's what I did, I went to sleep. I had just got gas at a little substation, a little sub, like they have a um, gas pump in the parking lot. This and was I, in Doyle's car, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And I drove up and I got out and went inside Brookshire's mm -hmm. and I got the Sprite, the sunflower seeds, and the buy one, get one free pack of Marlboro Mild cigarettes. Well, I come out and that's when Paige was already in the truck. Mm -hmm. In the truck with Paige Reed. Yes, that's right. And so when I seen the situation, I recognized it was something what was, what was the situation? He was just well. He was sitting there. in a truck. He wasn't supposed to be sitting in. So something ain't right. And Pe Petri was there. Or yeah, what? Petri was sitting in the passenger seat. And so I look over there and I'm like, man, what's up? And he said, we need. He said we need a new vehicle. And so I, uh, I was like, man, come on. And I hopped in the car and took off. Right.
by the time I'm to the second murder, I went to sleep. And the gunshots woke me up. I jumped out of the truck, and I seen there was only one person standing there, David Page. Well, I asked him why he shoot him, and he said he knew my name. He knew Page's name. Right, right. And when Samuel Petrie is shot, that took a toll on me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, man, this dude's done told me about having family. I mean, this is the type of man that I was raised to respect. And so now he's sitting there, he's shot, and I get into an argument with my co-defendant. Who was that? David Page. Mm -hmm. It was like this dude was not supposed to die, okay? He's not somebody that did anything or harmed anybody in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, and then reality setting in, Everything's gonna come back on me too. So self preservation. You were there. Self preservation kicks in. Mm -hmm. I mean, people say, why didn't you call the police? Well, that wasn't an option. I mean, that, I mean, that wasn't what I considered an option. So I said, look, I don't give a fuck what you do, man. Just get away from me. Yeah. And then he got out the truck. And did he tell you I'm gonna turn myself in? Or yeah, he just did, yeah. he did. But I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't thinking like. That he okay, was actually this gonna, gonna do put it. it all on me, right? No. And then so I was like, okay, I don't care what you do, just get away from me. And I was wondering, what are the odds that that David Page will tell what happened? I don't. It ain't. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's between him and whatever God he's choosing to worship right now, you know? <laughs> Good morning or afternoon. How are you? Hi, my name is Jessica. Good to see you. Have a seat. So he dropped you off, right? He dropped me off at IHOP. At IHOP. But how much? sense does that make if he if he held you at gunpoint or he didn't he hold you at gunpoint right he just you oh, felt I'm... afraid because he was carrying a gun do i understand that correctly right. it's just like anything you, you try to you try to get away with get away with something like i said if I, if I had a gun and i'm holding you right or even if i'm not holding you, you're just riding along with me and you know i've done killed two people you're going to try and talk your way out of getting away from me whether or not we're cool or not, you're gonna try and get away some, some way, form, or fashion. And it took me that long to figure out, okay, cool. I'm, that's the way I'm gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna be able to manipulate him letting me go by telling him to get, a, get away from here. Yeah, so, outsmarted him. In my opinion, yes. What hurt me the worst was the police chase. Cause they say, why are you running if you're not, if you're not guilty? But I did not know I was wanted for murder. I'm on parole. There's a gun in the truck. I'm going back to jail. I'm outside of the city limits of where I'm supposed to be. I'm going back to jail. And I got caught on the interstate. I refused to talk to the police about it. You know, I refused, when I, when I was first arrested, I refused to talk to the police, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I know how it is. It's a serious charge, and I've done been involved with the cops, and I know how they do things. I said, I'm not talking to y'all without an attorney. And, um, but why didn't you, if you don't have because, any name? Because, you know, like I said, I, I was caught up in this street cultural mindset where you don't talk to the police. You know, you don't inform on other people, right? But what if you know that it can It'll save be, I mean, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if it was like a child or something like that, and somebody's hurting a child, then that's, that's different, you know? I mean, it's just, I'm 31 years old now, so I see the nonsense in these quote-unquote rules that all these drug dealers and stuff and gamers and stuff that everybody lives by. I'm not saying it's right, but it's what I adhered to at the time, and at the time, it was, to me, I'm not telling the police nothing. And so I didn't know that they was putting it on me. I'm not gonna get these people in trouble to get myself out of trouble. That was my whole position, right? So I was like, man, I ain't got nothing to say against them. Now, had I known that they was all giving statements against me already, then I would have said, hold them up, you know? But at the same time, I'm doing this, my mom, I'm telling my mom, go find Darnell so he can help me. 
And my mom was like, baby, I think he's the one that first told the police. And I was like, what? And I read his statement. I don't know, I mean, I don't know where it came from or why it happened that way, but I mean, that's, that's his story. Anything that, that uh, you want to clear up here today? You remember anything? So I can remember that, that's, that's up. I'll say that the way the law was written, I didn't have it in my mind that I would be walking out of that courtroom a totally free person. But I'm thinking 10, 15, 20 years here. Which is also a lot. Yes, yeah, a lot, but not in Texas standards, because Texas hands out life sentences like it's candy. These are the two options that could have happened. Yes. I'm gonna need your vehicle. Pow, pow. Okay. And where do I fall from that? From here, you would fall this way. That okay. Way. So that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, sir. Okay. No. The other one is, if I'm getting in the vehicle, and you're turning to do whatever you got to do to the seat. I was doing this. Yes. He gets over right here. Pow, pow. So that's what happened. And what's gonna happen? You're gonna fall this way. Like this. Yep. And this is what happened. This is what they said. I'm not sure if, if I'm he... getting in the vehicle, pow, pow. I need your vehicle, pow, pow. And then I, I'm not sure if he fell like this or like this, but he fell. He fell towards was he toward the steering the... wheel. Yeah. So is this guy right here getting in? This was him. This guy getting in. It's right the here. only option. Yeah. If he fell forward, this guy right here shot him. Pow, pow. He went and forward. He, he was getting in the vehicle. Yes. That's the only way. If this guy was leaning forward on the steering wheel, he was getting in the vehicle and got shot from inside the vehicle. And that's what they all say, that he was getting in the vehicle when the shots were fired. Then but they said, it. yeah, but they said he did it. And he said, I didn't see it because I was just getting in the vehicle. Because he's the one that done it. This guy was the one that done it, getting in the vehicle. Only option. That's the only person that could have shot him. They just, they ramrodded that guy. It's the guy getting in the vehicle was the one that, that uh, shot him. That's David Page. That's the only one that could have done it. So I'm getting back in the car. Clint shoots Doyle in the head twice. Well, that goes very fast. So what happened in between? No, we were just riding to Longview. It's, but it's, we get out there. I get, go knock on the door, nobody answers. I knock on the back door, nobody answers. As I'm getting in, I don't know if you know what, a, uh, I think it was a Pontiac Grand Prix or Grand Am two-door car. If, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, someone else is sitting in the passenger seat, and you have to lean your seat forward yeah. for, for the person to get in the back seat. Well, while you're like this, two shots to the back of the head. Where were these bullets placed in the head? Well, Clint was sitting in the passenger seat. So he had turned sideways, fired. But in your first statement, you said the bullets were on the right of his head, right? I, that's why I would get, because he was like this. One's probably going to hit him here. The other one probably hit him there. I don't, I don't know exactly where they hit him. I just know they hit him somewhere in that journal vicinity. Yeah, they hit him in the left. They, I, they couldn't have hit him on the left. That's, that's in the papers. Mm -hmm. 
Couldn't have. Had him in the left? Couldn't have. I'm pretty sure. Well, on the, on the second murder, mm -hmm. it's my word against David Page's. They can't convict me based on pay, David Page's statement. Mm -hmm. That's why the forensics are so important, because they have nothing. All they have is co-defendant testimony. There's no DNA, there's no fingerprints. I mean, you got two vehicles and like four guns. There's not one fingerprint for me. First, you stated that Clint took the final shots, right? No. In your first statement? Oh, yeah, in the first yes. statement, yes, ma'am. Why I, did you do that? I was trying to save Mark. I got told to... Uh, because you were friends. Right. I've known Mark a lot longer than I've known Clint. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like I told the investigators, first two investigators, uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to save Mark. Can I ask you a very, very honest question? And I hope you're not offended, but this is my common sense again speaking. So I'm not attacking you and I'm not judging because I wasn't there. This is what I think. I think it's really hard to believe that someone lies in court to protect his friend and will not lie to protect his own life. Do you know? Do you I understand? never lied in court to protect my friend. You said... That okay, was a statement. It was giving... your statement, but it was really, really important. It was your first statement. You said Clinton shot this guy. He did. He killed him, you said. Mm. I, f I figured, like I told you again, I figured you shoot someone in the head, you think they're going to die. But what, what assures me that you're not uh, saving your own life right now? What assures me that you're telling the truth? Well, the only people that know the truth is me and Clint on the second murder. First murder, the only people that know the truth is me, Clint, and Mark, and Darnell. And Darnell. Do you, do you want the truth to come out? Truth is out. Well, everyone says something different, so... One of you is telling the truth, yeah. And you say it's you. So this is actually where the first bullet came in, and this is the second one. So this How did is they determine that? Because they, they, these come from the same gun. Okay. And the third wound was on his right temple, and it came from a different gun. And, and this also matches up with what they say happened at the creek when the guy was face down. So these were, there were only two shots fired with one gun and one shot fired with the other. So this could be the only scenario. Hold on. Can we remove the dog? You said, <laughs> said it's a two-door car, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he may have been leaning forward. Yeah, he was, actually. So you would need to be, like, back here a okay. little bit. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah. So you would need to be a little bit... Yeah, it's uncomfortable anyway. All right, we ready? Yes, but the dog is still there. She'll be all right. I'm, it's going that up way anyway. Like this here. No. Did you hit it? In the shoulder. In the shoulder. And one of the co-defendants said um, he was actually aiming f uh, from 20 centimeters off. Then you can hit him in the left? No. With your left hand then? Yeah. Then you should have to... You would have to reach around like this. Where this guy is, oh, here, hold the gun, shoot him. Can you, well, maybe you can go that side without. Well, you'd have to lean back. Yeah. And then those two guys back here are going to yes. say, what are you doing? But why would a jury believe this if it seems so clear to us? 
prosecutor. If the prosecutor has a a good story, he can get them people to to believe it. Now the defendant, his attorney's got to be real good to counteract that. Apparently, he didn't have a good attorney. No, he didn't. No. So that's that's. If you don't have a good attorney, most of the time you lose anyway. And how, how did the body fell when he was shot? Do you remember? Slumped over. Over to the towards steering the, wheel. Towards the steering wheel and the, the side of the car. Was, was Doyle dead? He was moaning. He was moaning? Yeah, he was still moaning. He wasn't moving, but he was moaning. And what did you do? Well, Clint had a gun. I had no gun. I helped put him in the trunk. I ain't gonna lie. You had no gun? No, man. And I'm sitting in the car, and I'm just sitting there. With the body in the yes, trunk? Yes, man. I'm just, I'm like debating. I'm like, eh, what do I do? And what were your options? Well, I could have went. Now that I think back on it, I could have went and, hey, hey look, man. Easily. Dude. That's what I think. I would have right, gone. But I, I just seen this guy kill one person. And he could easily say, hey, OK, yeah, go, go take care of these people. Uh, he just snitched on me. The cops are after us. I was thinking of my family. And in the meantime, this, this uh, victim is moaning in the trunk. So didn't you feel like, I need to help this guy? What, what am I going to do to save him by myself other than contact the authorities. But you didn't do that either. That's the way I looked at it. Dude was already dead. Were you ever sitting in the car thinking, I could, I can call 911 or I can just inform someone? Well, or... see, that's why I had said something, actually. I did say something about the hospital. I said, look, man, we could just drop them off outside the emergency room and take off. And then somebody else, the person didn't even shoot them, just happened to blur it out. Oh, but they got cameras outside the hospital. And then so, and that kind of like nixed that idea. And they took him out there to the creek. And they laid him out there at the creek. And then um, the other co defendant shot him, right? The, the last two shots were unnecessary, in my opinion. But who shot them? Mark. Mark did. Why? Clint told him, here, go ahead and, go ahead and put him out of his misery. And he did. Or you'll be laying down there with him. So, so he threatened Mark. Yes, ma'am. So he grabbed a pillow, stuck the gun in the pillow. Who grabbed a pillow? Uh, either Darnell or Mark. I can't remember exactly which one. But I know there was a pillow because he fired the shots into the pillow. So they put the pillow on the head? Yes, ma'am. On the back of his head? I believe so. And then they shot him. Mark did? Yes, ma'am. With what gun? A uh, twenty-two revolver. Clint's gun? He had got, like I said, all three of them had guns. And you were the only one who didn't have a yes, gun? Yes, ma'am. But if all three have a gun, why would they go to the creek? Because Clinton says so. If they all have a gun. You would have to ask them. Doesn't make any sense to me. It'd be different. If, if, if I would have had a gun, I probably would have shot Clint. Mm -hmm. That's just me. You're threatening me? OK. Self-preservation. If I would have had a gun, I would have shot Clint. Man, that, that made me a hero. If Mark would have shot him, that would have made him a hero. Darnell would have shot him and made him a hero. He done shot somebody. But tell me how it works when Mark has a gun, Clint, I'm just trying to understand. Maybe I'm just missing something. Clint has a gun. He says to Mark, shoot him, or otherwise you'll be laying with him. Why didn't Mark shoot Clint? You have to ask Mark that. But what do you think? I don't, tr like I said, I don't try to rationalize what other people think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lost cause. And he went to the back roads to my house. And he dropped me off, you know, close to my gate. Here's the problem, and this is the thing about Texas law. There's what's called the law of parties. Mm -hmm. Now, I was indicted as the primary shooter. I was tried as the primary shooter. 
I held all these people that had guns hostage. You know, I forced them all to do everything. Everybody's got a gun but the person testifying. Everybody's in fear for their life. What would have been your, your uh, motive? What does the prosecutor say about your motive? Well, they said you... it was for the car to go see the girl. But oh, that right. Was... That was, yeah, that was the first one, right? Right, yeah. right. That's, they said that and then needed another car, but throughout the interview process, my co-defendant, one of them eventually said something about um, the car being taken, right? Mm -hmm. And so the police just kind of latched onto that because that makes it capital murder. So you can kill somebody and walk away and it's not death penalty. That's not cap capital murder. Right, it's not capital yeah. murder. You can kill somebody, walk away, come back and take their shoes. It's not capital murder. No. But if you kill somebody for their shoes, yes. it's capital murder. So they had to prove this theme that I killed the people for the car, to take the car, and they wanted to prove a continuous episode because of the second murder. They wanted to figure out a way to tie them together. So the only thing they could come up with was that both cars were taken to go see, uh, girl. excuse me, the girl in Midland, right? And of course, nobody ever brought up the fact about me having a car. And <laughs> I walked up to the truck. Clint was sitting in the truck with the guy. He, the dude said he was going to give us a ride. This is Petri. Yes, ma'am. Supposedly he had family in Midland, been meaning to go out there anyway. Did you know him, Petri? Never seen him. Never seen him. We just got gas. Mm. We just got gas. I'm not finna pay for $10 worth of gas if I'm finna kidnap somebody 15 feet away and carjack him and abandon his car. That don't make no sense. I'm saying, hey, well, I'm finna pull up here and go get some cigarettes, something to drink. So I go into the Brookshire's, I come out, this dude's sitting in the car, in the truck. And I'm like, what's going on? And so he's like, I, it's, it's cool, man, I got this. So I'm like, hey, man, we need to talk, right? So I get into the car and I drive off, right? And he follows me. We end up later on. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, we need to get rid of Doyle's car. I said, OK, but what's up with this dude? He said, well, man, you know, he's just giving us a ride. And he kind of grinned. Now, I never heard him threaten Samuel Patrick. I never seen him threaten Samuel Patrick. Again, I was inside the Brookshires, which the police never went there and interviewed anybody conveniently. They never talked to the, as a matter of fact, in the evidence, you see the photos of Brookshire's parking lot? Mm -hmm. There's a sub gas station, a small gas station. You know, here in the United States, I'm sure you've seen these big shopping centers. They got little gas stations yes. in the parking lot. Yes. There's one like that at the Brookshire's. There's a little gas station right there. They never talked to that clerk. Why? I don't know. I mean, the police never, they've ever investigated the crime scene. They just, I mean, David Page told them what happened, and that's, they just drove by like three weeks later and took pictures of the parking lot. Three that weeks was, later. That's three weeks, that's all they did. There's no police report, there's nothing. They never investigated that. They never talked to a store clerk. They never issued a media release asking if anybody's seen any witnesses. David Page told them I kidnapped them, and that's all they ran with. So we stop out by where what's called a pump jack, the oil fields, things that pump up and down, yeah. pump the oil out of the ground. Uh, Mommy and Sam are talking. Clint's walking back and forth on the edge of the truck. It's like, say that's the truck. Clint's walking back and forth right here. Me and Sam are right here. About that time you hear, sorry, Sam, you got to die. Shot him twice. By the time I'm to the second murder, I went to sleep. And the gunshots woke me up. Well, I jumped out of the truck, and I seen there was only one person standing there, David Page. Well, I asked him why he shoot him, and he said he knew my name. He knew Page's name. Right, right. And what it was, I had talked to my ex's father, mm -hmm. and he said, they're, the Texas Rangers are looking for David Page. And I turned around. I didn't know the conversation that David Page had while I was asleep. And he'd been telling this dude his whole life story. So I said, hey, they say the Texas Rangers are looking for you for murder. Because see, at first they weren't even looking for me. They was looking for him for the murder of Duel, the first victim. And I said, hey, dude, they're looking for you for murder. Well, right away, his eyes cut back there. And so I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you know? And but like I said, even then, I didn't know what all they talked about. And then come to find out afterwards, he told him he was from Oar City, Texas, and he done told this dude his whole life story, right?
I was in uh, B Wing with Paige. I know I was there with Paige. I'm not sure anybody else because it's like I refresh my memory as far as that. But then, yeah, I know I had seen on the news whenever everything happened, you know what I'm saying, as far as that case goes. And then later on, and then he ended up coming in there, you know? And then, but they didn't say everything as far as details. But then later on, started talking about things. And, Paige was. Yeah. And I know that they were cutting them a deal as far as for testify against Clinton, you know what I'm saying? Then How did you know about a deal? About what? You said I knew he had a deal, but how did you know? Because he was uh, telling people, you know what I'm saying? Like he got like he didn't I think say like forty or thirty years you know, plea agreement, you know what I'm saying, to testify against Clinton. You know? But but who who did he have to deal with? Uh, the DA, I believe. But 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 he told you that. Yes, ma'am. One on one. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, David Page. It was 2010. Mm -hmm. Well, he come in there, and at first we didn't know what he was in there for. Then he was like, I'm in here, I got 30 years for uh, murder. And he, he, then he went on telling us about his case. How they drove, who shot who. He, he was saying a lot of stuff that he shouldn't have been saying. Like what? Um, where they hid, where they, where he hid the gloves, something about he took them in his truck and took them somewhere else. How they were at a pump jack and he shot that dude in the head. Uh, he is David. He's, David, yes, yeah, David Page. My bad. I'll, I'll, I'll verify. Uh, David Page says something about how his lawyer paid off the district attorney and they made a deal, but a plea agreement that if. Uh, David Page testified he'd get 30 years and that Clint, Clint Young would get the death penalty. Like, 30 years for David Page? That's the least amount I've ever seen anybody get for murder. Ever. Usually it's 80, 90, 75. I've never seen nobody just get 30 years. And you actually overheard him saying that he made a deal? They, oh, yeah, he told me. He said his lawyer made a deal with the t district attorney that if he testified that they, they would guarantee him that he wouldn't get no more than 30 years and that he would be out in 15. And how come that so many people say that you admitted the crime? How does that work? Well, it's a lie. And it's also a lie that you have said that they were not going to connect you to the murder because you were wearing gloves. But were you wearing gloves that night? I had bought some, yes. Why? Because it was cold. It was 11 degrees. Hmm? It was 11 degrees or 11 Celsius. It was cold. It was, there wasn't no 11 degrees of it. I, we were all wearing jackets. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> If you're wearing, wearing jackets, it's kind of cold. You really can't tell, but I've got messed up hand here. That's still right there from fighting. I've got poor blood flow due to cut myself right there whenever I was younger. Uh, messed up this hand whenever I was a little kid. My hands get cold. My hands are cold right now. And I'm, I've had them like this almost the whole time, except for the time I'm using them. So. So you needed them because you were yes, cold. So you you never said that you shot Sam Petri no, through the never, head twice, never. and that they will never connect you to the murder. That's just said, untrue. Whenever they asked me about it, I said there's no way they can connect me to it due to the fact that the where where I was standing, where Clinton was standing, and where I mean where uh, Sam Petri was standing, mm -hmm. and the fact that the the bullets they came from the wrong area. They can't place the gun in my hand with or without gloves on. But where are those gloves now? In the state's custody. 
they just never, they try to destroy him. Mm -hmm. So I said, look, I didn't kill that old man. And you take my DNA, take my blood, take my hair samples, test them gloves. I didn't kill that dude. And they didn't know what gloves I was talking about. So we sat there and argued about the gloves. Finally, they go back out to the crime scene and found them. They left them out there. But when they sent the gloves to be tested, they asked for DNA testing on the outside of the gloves. And all these years I was thinking, why don't they do that? So they offered you a plea deal? Yes, ma'am. For how many years? I think it was either like 60 or 65. 60 or 65. 65. And how did that feel to you? I'm like, for what? I, I came, I told y'all what I knew about both murders. So first they offered you 60? Yes, ma'am. And then they, at one point, offered you 30, right? Yes, ma'am. It didn't feel right? No, it didn't feel right at all. Because you've helped them, right? I figured I, I, you help me, I help you. Mm-hmm. This is where the, the criminality of the state's actions come in because they're bound by Supreme Court law. I mean, the, it's the law of the land. If you make a plea bargain, you have to inform the defense. Mm -hmm. When I go into that trial, I'm allowed to know everything that's going on. My lawyers had a hearing before the trial and put the district attorneys on the stand under oath and asked them, has there been any talks of plea bargains? And they said no. They all said no. Okay, well we got that report, the new attorneys I did, they get the, the lawyer's personal file, mm -hmm. and that's how they got this report. And so they go get the attorney's billing records that he's filed with the courthouse to get his money. Mm -hmm. And on, almost every line is met with district attorney and client to discuss plea bargain, met with district attorney, it's like five lines. All right, different conclude the video at 328 on the 27th of November 2001. And is it true that the investigator he told you that he thinks that you you are the killer in the second case? Yes. And what did you respond to him when he said that? The same scenario. And what did he say about that scenario of yours? He never shot it down, but he just kept saying, I still think you're the one that did it. I think you're the one that did it. The DA had never had a death penalty case. And here comes this horrible case. You know, and there's me not saying nothing. So you got one side of the story, and that's the co-defendants. It's just, it was like the perfect storm for him, and he went all out. And they had this big, elaborate trial like it's never been had in Texas before. He just rolled his dice, and after my, the state upheld my conviction, the appeals court upheld my conviction, he retired. The only reason I can think of, and forgive me if this is too uh, short-sighted, but, the only thing I could think of is that they offered you the deal because you were the killer and they wanted to close the, the case. They wanted to have this capital murder. You're wrong. So that didn't happen? No, ma'am. And how would you feel if he would actually be executed? What, the, what would it do to you or to your soul or to your... There's a, there's a saying that my religion has, and it's pretty much the only rule we have to follow. And ye harm none, do what you will. I can do what I want as long as I'm not hurting anyone. You never hurt anyone. I can't say that. But since I picked up this religion, I've done my best not to. And when did you pick up this religion? 2006. So after the... Yes, ma'am. 